Hello, and welcome to episode nine of A Week in Watches. I am your host, Zach Weiss, co-founder of Worn and Wound. Thanks for joining me. It's August, it's hot out, news is a bit slow, so this week we only have three stories for you, uh, and that's it. Short, sweet, you can get back to the pool, your margarita, or whatever it is you were doing. As always, we welcome your questions about watches and the watch industry, uh, and we'll try to uh, answer them on future episodes. So please do send those in, either leave them in the comments or send them to info at wornandwound.com. We'll try to get to them. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you find this uh, video entertaining or informational or anything else. It is uh, very much appreciated. This week's episode is brought to you once again by the Wind Up Watch Shop, where they recently added the Seiko 5 Sports GMT watches, which are perhaps the most affordable mechanical GMTs currently on the market and quite fun looking at that. Check them out and more at windupwatchshop.com. James Bond is old. Let's have an auction. Uh, everyone's favorite British spy turns 60 years old uh, on the silver screen this year, and as such, Christie's is holding an auction of James Bond-related items. So there's 60 lots spanning the 25 films, starting with Sean Connery all the way through Daniel Craig, uh, the proceeds of which are donated to 45 charities, and it's sort of broken up which charity by the various lots. There are two versions of this auction occurring. There's a live version and an online version. The live version has 25 lots, which uh, is featuring uh, various really exciting things, including an Aston Martin DB5 replica stunt car from the No Time to Die film that is replete with scratches and signs of action. So this thing really looked like it just came off the set. They're estimating that will go for 1.5 to 2 million pounds, which these estimates are though often low. There's several other cars, tuxedos, bow ties, etc., and naturally, some watches. No, Sean Connery's sub from Dr. No is not available, nor is Sir Roger Moore's Golden Tuna Seiko from Your Eyes Only. No, those are ones are not available. However, a few Omegas from No Time to Die are. Uh, and these were watches that were actually worn by Daniel Craig in the filming of the movie. So there's a blue Seamaster Aquaterra that is worn in the opening sequence, which I believe takes place in Italy. It is a modern master coaxial version, just the kind of standard Aquaterra Seamaster. And that's estimated to go for 15 to 20,000 pounds. Perhaps more exciting though, is the Seamaster Diver 300 007 edition. Uh, and that's actually worn throughout the film by Daniel Craig. And this is the like signature 007 watch that is currently for sale by Omega, Omega, whatever have you. And it features, you know, it's a recent all titanium body. It features the master coaxial caliber 8806 inside and the love it or leave it helium escape valve at 10. I might leave it. That one is also estimated at 15 to 20,000 uh, pounds. And for the opportunity to own a Bond watch worn by James Bond in the making of a James Bond, um, seems like quite the exceptional opportunity. So once again, that feels like it's probably on the low side. The lots from this auction will be viewable September 15th through 28th in London at Christie's Auction House for those who uh, happen to be in the UK. And then the live auction itself will be held on the 28th. We're obviously very curious to see where these various items end up. But so that's only one of the auctions. There's also an online auction with 35 lots. These are smaller lots, which include various posters, scripts, and other things from the uh, 25 films. Uh, there is of note actually a special Leica Q2 that was signed by Daniel Craig and it comes in some crazy suitcase thing. That'll be available from the 15th of September through the 5th of October. So once again, online bidding there. Good luck to you James Bond fans who decide to try. Studio Underdog is a little lad that likes berries and cream. Studio Underdog, spelt with a zero, is a British micro brand founded in around 2020, 2021 by young industrial designer, Richard Bank. The brand is founded with a sense of humor and whimsy to the watches, which can be seen in uh, the colors that they chose, the naming, uh, and the general sort of irreverent style of their copy. Um, but despite being a little bit more, uh, uh, you know, humorous and, and fun, uh, it really clicked with the watch community at their, at their launch. They did very well on Kickstarter. So they have one style of watch currently in production, which is a uh, bi-compax, but not by the uh, Universal Geneve definition, uh, Big Eye Chronograph. It's powered by a manual wound Siegel ST1901 caliber. It's a 38.5 millimeter watch that's 44.5 millimeters long 
and around 13.6 millimeters thick. So just, you know, a nice sort of classic wearing uh, manual wound chronograph. The dials are flat, but feature a kind of intense grainy textured region in the center that then generally features uh, bright colors or very vibrant colors with a gradient to them. Uh, they have a color matched sub seconds at nine and then a larger contrast big eye counter for the 30 minute counter off of three. At launch, they were priced around $450. So I believe that was a Kickstarter pricing. So there were three colors at launch, Desert Sky, which was a soft blue and light tan combo, Goofy Panda, which uh, features some zeros in that goofy uh, word as well. That was a black and white version, as you might've guessed. And then there was a watermelon, which was uh, bright pink and green. And something they did for this version was they actually changed the markers from circular markers to little seed shaped markers. So once again, quite whimsical and fun. Um, the watermelon really did stand out because it was just so bright and sort of energetic. Uh, you can check out Ed Jelly's review of those three watches on Worn and Wept. They followed up that original batch with mint chocolate chip, which is one of my favorite ice cream flavors, as well as a Fratello watches collaboration titled Aubergine, which is eggplant for those of us stateside. This week's release is another fruit forward design titled Strawberries and Cream. Studio Underdog worked with watch and tennis journalist Miguel Siabra on this design, which was inspired by tennis, obviously Wimbledon, as well as the British Summers. As you could have guessed from the name, it features a rich red gradient center, orange seed markers, cream accents, and little hints of green on the chronograph hands for a little extra vegetable touch. It's bold and it's summery looking and obviously a lot of fun. It includes a beige leather strap and a steel Milanese strap. Between the release of their first models and this current watch, they released the sort of Gen 2 version of, of all their watches. And the big difference there being that they are now assembled in the UK. Um, the strawberries and cream is part of that Gen 2 set, so it is priced a little bit higher than the originals uh, at around 675, but that still obviously seems quite reasonable, particularly for a manual wound chronograph. In order to purchase this watch, there will be an order window from 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern time on August 9th to August 16th, so a seven day order window. Within this window, all orders received will be manufactured. Delivery will then begin in December and possibly continue into 2023, depending on the order quantity, and they will be shipped based on the order number, so first come, first serve. What I would like to know, though, is what combination would you like to see? Pina colada, cookie dough, key lime pie? Uh, let us know. The more delicious, the better. Release of the week. The Cassioke is officially metal. G-Shock, every watch nerd's favorite digital brand and go-to for uh, days off from mechanical timepieces, had a runaway success with the 2100 line. Released in 2019, this sub $100 Anna Digi watch uh, was very thin, fun, and had a very passing resemblance to the Royal Oak, earning it the nickname the Cassie Oak. Over the years since, it has come out in dozens of colorways in various materials and different sizes. There's resin ones, there's steel ones, there's, there's a whole gamut of them. Uh, and then this year in 2022, they released the GAB 2100s, which took that same sort of original design, but added in tough solar technology. So, you know, it's no longer relying on a battery. I mean, there is a battery, but it is charged by the sun, um, as well as Bluetooth for syncing with uh, G-Shock's app. This allows for just, you know, greater functionality overall. One thing that did change also on the dial was they lost the day pointer, which was a, uh, a funny little addition on the original watches. I always enjoyed this sort of uh, antiquated complication on a digit on a very modern digital watch, but it has since uh, changed to a mode selector, which is useful given the extended uh, functionality of the new design. But now they've gone full metal. So the GMB 2100 series uh, takes that same design and makes it all steel, but also adds in an all steel bracelet. So pre previous steel models had resin bracelets. So now you have the full steel effect, just like the full metal 5600s that G-Shock has been making for a few years and obviously has been very successful with. So if you've been looking for an all metal version, this is definitely the one for you. Of course, like all other G-Talks, these maintain their high standards of uh, shock protection, obviously, but then also things like 200 meters of water resistance. There are three colors at launch, 
uh, all black, dark gray, and copper, which is sort of a deep rose gold ion plated version. The cases measure 44.5 by 50 millimeters and 13 millimeters thick. So it's still relatively thin for a G-Shock, but about a one millimeter thicker than the resin version. That said, I would say in person, having seen them, that they feel more compact than the dimensions really indicate. They are also naturally heavier, being all steel. So with all of the links, which you would remove some uh, likely to fit your wrist, it comes in 165 grams versus the 72 grams of the resin version. Once again, that is to be expected. Uh, similarly, the price is also a little bit higher, so that is, in, but they are in line with the full metal 5600s at uh, 550 to $600, depending on the finishing chosen. This is obviously a very cool addition to this very popular line, uh, and G-Shock is known to expand quite dramatically on their color colors and, and things that they do with their watches. We've seen many variations of full metal 5600s, uh, including titanium models. So my fingers are crossed for the full titanium 2100. I don't know if that's ever coming out, but I sure, certainly hope so because as I've said before, titanium is better than steel. And that's a wrap. Thanks for tuning in. Come back to us next week for more up-to-date uh, watch news. Um, please do send us questions if you got them. I'll try and get to them. And uh, be sure to head to Worn Around Daily for, you know, daily news and reviews of excellent wristwatches. See you next time.